Hello everybody, Dr. Yu here with the next video from the Calgary Guide video series, The Pathogenesis and the Clinical Findings of Right Heart Failure. As always, before we begin, please support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out, and also by subscribing to my channel. Thanks! And with that, let's discuss right heart failure. Right heart failure is the failure of the right ventricle, and is defined by reduced right ventricular stroke volume. Now there's three groups of disorders that can contribute to causing right heart failure. Cardiac diseases, diseases of the lung parenchyma, and diseases that affect the pulmonary vasculature. The first group of causes of right heart failure are cardiac diseases. These include right ventricular infarction, which results in the death of right ventricle myocardial tissue, which reduces the contractility of the right ventricle myocardium. Right ventricular cardiomyopathies can also reduce the contractility of the right ventricular myocardium, resulting in the reduced ability of the right ventricle to pump blood, also known as reduced stroke volume. Cardiac diseases can also include tricuspid regurgitation, or the backflow of blood back through the tricuspid valve into the right atrium. That reduces the blood within the right ventricle, resulting in a chronically low right ventricle ejection fraction, which reduces the right ventricular stroke volume. Two other types of cardiac disease include pulmonic valve disease, as well as left heart failure, which increases the pulmonary blood pressure. These two cardiac conditions expose the right ventricle to high afterload, as in they increase the pressure against which the right ventricle must pump. That increases right ventricular wall tension, which stretches the myocytes myofilaments to longer than their optimal contraction length, which makes it harder for the right ventricle to eject blood out. Diseases of the lung parenchyma and diseases that affect the lung vasculature also contribute to the right ventricle failing via this mechanism. Lung parenchymal diseases include chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, interstitial lung diseases, respiratory distress syndrome, and chronic lung infection and bronchiectasis. These lung parenchymal disorders result in hypoxic alveoli, which causes the pulmonary vasculature to reflexively vasoconstrict. And since the right ventricle is responsible for pumping blood into the lungs, vasoconstriction of the lung blood vessels results in exposing the right ventricle to a chronically high afterload, or high resistance, that increases the right ventricular wall tension, stretching myocyte muscle fibers past their optimal contraction length, making it harder for the right ventricle to eject blood. This mechanism is also shared by disorders that affect the lung vasculature, including acute pulmonary embolism, primary pulmonary hypertension, and other disorders of the lung vasculature, including scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and HIV. Note that by far the most common cause of right-sided heart failure is left heart failure. However, isolated right heart failure, as in right heart failure not caused by left heart failure, is called core pulmonale. So what are the clinical findings of right heart failure that applies to all causes of right heart failure? Well, these clinical findings are caused by two main pathophysiological mechanisms, blood backing up into the systemic venous vasculature and right ventricle pumping against a high afterload. First, let's talk about the consequences of blood backing up into the systemic venous vasculature. Blood accumulating in the veins before the right atrium, such as the internal jugular vein, will result in a high JVP, or jugular venous pulse. Since the right ventricle cannot pump more venous blood into the lungs, the abdominal jugular reflex will be positive. Blood backing up into the systemic vasculature also increases the venous hydrostatic pressure, which increases the bulk flow of fluid out of the capillaries into systemic tissues. That results in peripheral pitting edema. And since fluid is gravity dependent, the edema will start from the feet and move up as venous congestion worsens, eventually presenting as ascites. Finally, Blood backing up into the systemic venous vasculature also congests the liver and the spleen, enlarging them, causing hepatosplenomegaly, which activates the pain receptors in that area of the abdomen, resulting in right upper quadrant abdominal discomfort. The other main cause of the clinical findings of right heart failure is that the right ventricle still needs to pump against high resistance or high afterload. High resistance in the pulmonary vasculature will shut the pulmonic valves with greater than normal force, resulting in a loud P2 component of the second heart sound. This loud pulmonic component may also be palpable on examination. High resistance in the pulmonary vasculature will also lead to compensatory remodeling of the right ventricle, resulting in right ventricular hypertrophy or enlargement that presents as an RV heave on palpation of the precordium. Note that other clinical findings of right heart failure depends on the specific underlying cause. For instance, 
dyspnea is a sign of COPD, as well as a sign of right heart failure, if in fact the COPD is causing the right heart failure. And that's it for a quick and easy review of the pathogenesis and clinical findings of right heart failure. Again, if you like this video, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so that you can be kept up to date on more Calgary Guide videos. Thanks, and see you in the next video.